everybody. My topic is political participation in the United States government. Six years ago, a downward, a downward spiral of political participation began in the United States government. In 1972, the Watergate affair of President Nixon sparked a seat towards American citizens as well as our own White House. His motives were to hire outside sources to illegally record important and confidential conversations that would only be to his benefit, yet trust was placed in his hands with America. I will be referring to political participation as boycotting, contacting a politician's office, demonstrations or protests, affiliating one's <coughs> with election. With, with political parties and participating in online forums. All of these, bless you, all of these are losing value not only because of Nixon's Watergate affair, but other contributing events and factors that I will present in my supporting claims. It is my contention there are faults in the United States government system causing political participation to be at an all-time low. My first supporting claim is that government officials have given its citizens reason to mistrust their credibility in the past. Let the My Lai Massacre strengthen my claim as it signifies how crooked our government was during the Vietnam War. The United States government orders were careless to the extent that 500 innocent citizens were slaughtered, leaving American soldiers at fault. To quote History.com's My Lai Massacre article and informational video, their own GIs, GIs can be defined as an abbreviation referring to U.S. soldiers, their own GIs wondered, quote, what other atrocities their superiors were concealing, quote. Since the Watergate affair of Nixon and the My Lai Massacre, there has been an evident decline in petition signing and there has been a decrease in voter turnout. My second supporting claim is that voter identification laws prohibit voting participation. Voter identification laws are strategies asserted by the government to create a barrier when voting. By requiring photo identification and limiting the hours that the voting polls are open. According to the po Politics of Power, a critical introduction to American government, a textbook based on the study of American politics, recent voter suppression campaigns further depress voting levels throughout the electorate. The groups include, but are not limited to, working Americans, lower income, and the less educated. This is especially a fault in the government because voting is on a Tuesday, a weekday, considered to be part of a working week, which I'm sure the government officials know. Lastly, my supporting claim, my last supporting claim, is that presidential cam campaigning for the past two decades limit our democratic system. The idea of a two-party system is a system even the media influences to the public in order to make the citizens feel as if they only have two political choices, such as Democrat, Republican. It always limits to two parties, and that's a big media influence, which is a fault in our system. According to ProQuest, during Bill Clinton's campaigning team, during Bill Clinton's campaign during the 1990s, Bill Clinton's team spent at least $34 million in access of legal limitations, and his competing candidates, Bob Dole, spent $14 million overboard, which meaning they spent in access of money in order to sway your opinion. The campaigning committees today still do their best to use millions of dollars to sway our opinions and make it seem as if they are only two lead, there are only two leading options for this presidency. To restate my claim, the evident faults in the government's political system are mistrust in the credibility of government officials, <clears throat> voter identification laws are deterring the working class, less educated, and lower income from participating in elections, and for the past two decades, the two-party influence is money motivated rather than contributing to a true democracy. They are all reasons for the significant decline in political participation. There is some controversy because although the political parties are, you know, those being Democrat, liberal, Republican, um, the, such as those parties, are known as a way of presenting favorable qualities of the citizens in America in an organized fashion, so it could be seen as a beneficial thing, my findings are not supporting of that idea. So thank you so much for your time.
Right. Well, you do identify the proposition. The phrasing on it is a little complicated. There's not really a preview of what the supporting content's going to be. There's a lot of definition about what you mean by declining participation. But then there's no data that shows that it, that is, in fact, the case, that there is a difference in the level of boycotting or petition signed. Or, and, and even the voting number, which should be pretty easy to document, you don't really give us any specifics on that. I think that's problematic. You take it as a presupposition that this is the case, uh, that we are acting differently than we did in the past when it comes to participation in the electoral process. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of evidence of that. Uh, the, the first point that you have suggests that the reason is the distrust in the government. And uh, for some reason, the My Lai massacre comes up. You earlier had uh, Nixon as your introductory uh, example. I, if you could show that there is declining participation rates subsequent to the 72 election and the Watergate crisis, that would be fine. Uh, the My Lai massacre was definitely something that was uh, horrifying, uh, but I'm not exactly sure that people saw it as being part of uh, the political process. It's definitely a mistake in the government and in the way the uh, system was organized. There were consequences for it, and uh, the notion that, any, you know, my guess would be that if you talk to the vast majority of voters who have been born since 1980, which is probably more than half of the voters, uh, they have no idea what you're talking about when you make a reference to the My Lai massacre. So the idea that they are being affected in some way by this seems to be uh, just kind of counterintuitive. Uh, the voter identification issue, I think this could be an argument in and of itself, the notion that um Voter identification is designed to reduce uh, participation in the process. There's clearly a difference of opinion between the people who advocate these things and the people who are opposed to them. You're taking the position that it is problematic in some way uh, without explaining how it would limit people's access to the polls to uh, require that they demonstrate that they are the person that they claim to be. Uh, I think that there's a good reason to maybe suggest that there is a problem or a barrier that's created by ID laws, but you don't have any explanation of what that is. You just kind of presuppose that that's a problem. You make it sound like the selection of Tuesday was a deliberate attempt to keep people from voting in the process. Uh, a lot of states, by the way, do have absentee voting, which doesn't affect uh, whether or not you vote on Tuesday uh, whatsoever. And uh, we do have to have a particular date. The notion that another date might be appropriate, I don't, I don't think it's a constitutional prerogative. I think it's mostly up to the states, except for uh, the federal elections, which are required to happen uh, in November in order to uh, in install a new Congress and Senate or president every four years. Um, you know, but what the day of the week is, I don't know that it, how big a difference it would make. You, you, again, presuppose that it makes a difference, and I don't know that it does. That seems to be uh, a little bit uh, problematic. The information on the third point seems to suggest that the two-party system is responsible for this, and um, as opposed to the two-party system representing the interests of the people, uh, it's the two-party system suppressing the interests of the people. Uh, there's not really much demonstration that other parties are viable for any reason. Your argument here seems to be that because campaigns spend a lot of money, uh, that there's something wrong with that uh, in trying to influence voters, since that's what a campaign is and that's what freedom of speech is. Uh, you try to influence people to support the position that you're taking and get them to vote for you. Why is it the amount of money that is being spent problematic? It's, it's almost counterintuitive. If more money creates a greater involvement, why wouldn't, you know, why wouldn't it be something that would be a desirable sort of thing? Um, I think there are arguments to be made that suggest that there are problems with it, but you don't explain what those problems are. It's just kind of, that's a sign that there's something wrong without necessarily explaining what it is that's wrong and why the money is the source of that particular problem. I think that we do have institutional problems. I think that you've got a couple of things here that could be demonstrated as being particular problems. Maybe picking one of them to focus on would be the stronger way to go. And any, whichever one you pick, you need to have a little bit stronger support. You kind of are, are relying on some generalizations and a couple of inferences that have very little data to support them. Maybe one or two examples or pieces of information. And I think you're making bigger generalizations than you can support with those uh, with that data. All right, thank you.